Hey friends, welcome back to another Seed Talk with Lisa and Lane. Hey Lane. Hello everybody. So Lane and I are just, we were just sitting here discussing that it's a little chillier here in Southeastern Virginia this morning. I mean, our classic or historic last frost date is has been mid-November for years. And we frequently get a little frost and then it warms back up again. But I was just really happy to wake up to some frostiness this morning. So friends, if you're new here, welcome. Um, this podcast kind of grew out of Lane's um, job at the Gardener's Workshop where she is the seed manager. And she was um, fielding lots of questions from folks buying seeds on how to germinate and do this, that, and the other. And we, um, she approached about, why don't we do the, a little series of seed talk? And y'all, here we are. How long has it been, Elaine? Has it been a year yet? Uh, it has actually. Yeah, we're on episode 60 something. So yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so we thought it was just going to be kind of like a little series and it has grown into this amazing podcast. And I just appreciate Jelaine just does such a great job at getting y'all's what y'all are asking about and creating beautiful PowerPoints, um, slide decks for y'all to look at. And that's just a reminder, friends, you can go over to YouTube and watch the podcast and see us as well as the beautiful pictures that are often a part of our show. So um, anyway, this podcast is brought to you by thegardenersworkshop.com, where you can find a fully stocked garden shop, all the same tools, seeds, and supplies that we use um, in our own gardens, as well as a full library of online courses for flower farming and for home gardeners. And we would love for you to come over and check it out. So Lane, what are we talking about today? Well, the USDA, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, actually updated the USDA hardiness zone map for those of us in the United States. And it's the first time it's been done since 2012. So it's kind of a big deal. And there's a little bit of confusion of how does this affect me if I'm in the United States? How does it affect me if I'm somewhere else outside the United States and I'm referencing this map? What if I moved up a zone? What does that mean? So we're just going to walk through all of that and help understand what these updates actually mean. I think that's just such a great idea because you're so right. And the confusion is growing every day. I heard somebody talking about it and I thought, oh my gosh, no wonder people are confused because it's really can be really pretty basic and simple. Um, so yeah, so let's take it away, Lane. All right. So like I mentioned before, the USDA plant hardiness zone map has been updated very recently. And the last update, like I said, was in 2012. And as a reminder, this is based on 30 year averages of the lowest annual winter temperature at all these different locations. And it's divided into these 10 degree Fahrenheit increments per zone. And then there are half zones A and B that are in five degree increments. And this 2023 map has been updated, first of all, to take into account data from a more recent time period. Right. So the 2012 map was based on data from 1976 to 2005. And the new map is based on data from 1991 to 2020. So that's the first difference. It's based on a more recent 30-year period. Right. And then in addition to that, in this article the USDA put out, they referenced the use of increasingly sophisticated mapping methods, as well as the inclusion of data from more weather stations. So the 2012 edition had just under 8,000 weather stations reporting, hmm. and this has 13,412. So it's quite a bit more. And this was a really interesting part is that compared to the 2012 map, this 2023 version, it says reveals that half the country actually shifted up to the next warmer half zone. Wow. Wow. Yeah. You know, so, all that says to me is somebody gets to fall plant that didn't get to fall plant before, maybe for cool flowers. That's so true. And some areas of the country shifted a lot more than others. I read that the Midwest shifted more than the Southeast. Alaska got a lot more detailed and it's now shown overall to be warmer. It went down from six and a quarter square miles of detail to a quarter wow. square mile of detail. Yeah. So Lisa, did you actually shift a zone? I know for me, I went from 7B to officially 8A. Did you actually move? Well, we kind of lost 7B. So for all these years, we've been defined as 7B slash 8A, which let me just say that 
all these times that I'm talking and doing event, doing live events or making recordings, I always have to pause to be sure I'm say, saying 7B slash 8A and not 7A slash 8B, which is totally incorrect, right? Yes. Um, so now we are officially, officially 8A. And interestingly enough, Rhonda, who works with us, who lives about 20 minutes from me, probably 12 or 14 miles, somewhere in that note, she's listed as 7B, but she's closer to water. Um, you know, we're really surrounded in water here um, on the coast. And um, so, yeah, so we lost the 7B, which I'm kind of glad because we've been behaving that way for a long time. Yeah. So anyone that hasn't checked the updated map and you can just search for your zone by zip code, by the way, I will put the link in the show notes where you can check. But it is worthwhile if you live in the United States checking to see if your zone actually shifted like a lot of people's have. I guess there's about a 50-50 chance that you might have shifted based on what they said. Exactly, exactly. Now, if you live in another country and you reference the USDA hardiness zone temperature guidelines to find your equivalent zone wherever you live, those temperatures still correspond to the same zone. So zone seven is still zero to 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Right. Zone five is still negative 20 to negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So nothing has changed in terms of which temperature ranges correspond to which zones. Yeah. Although your average annual minimum temperatures may be changing just like many of ours are. Right. Yeah. All right. So a lot of people, like I just mentioned, may have moved up a zone, a half zone or so. So I want to talk about what this means for cool flowers. So the first thing I want to say is that if you have moved into zone eight, all the flowers in Lisa's cool flowers book are actually winter hardy in your zone. <laughs> Yeah, that is um, so true. I mean, we have lived on the teetering line for so long um, and it literally would depend on which way the wind blew back when we were colder than we have been the last five years. And um, so cool flowers, I mean, it just, it's gotten better for all of us with cool flowers, more options, I would say. And when your zone moves, if your zone moves from like seven to eight or five to six, it doesn't affect your planting dates, but it does affect what you can fall plant. Exactly. That is the bottom line that zones have always only told us what would survive our winter based on that low temperature. And that's even true for trees and shrubs, right? I mean, there's shrubs that are winter hardy in the South that won't survive winters. Well, it's the same thing. Um, it's the, it's now there are just more cool season hardy annuals that may survive in your zone if you got bumped. You know, now the reality, it's kind of like, I think a lot of people have figured that out through trial and error, but now you kind of have the official stamp. Yeah. So you have more options for what you can actually fall plant. So yes. let's talk about if someone moved up from one zone number into a different zone. So let's say someone went from 6B to 7A or 7B to 8A. What are some things you would be thinking of if you have completely moved up to a new zone? I mean, just what all the options are. What what do I now get to grow? I mean, I'm you you have up on the slide um, on the slide deck bells of Ireland and corn cockle or agrostema. And I immediately think of all of the folks that have just wanted for so long to grow bells of Ireland, but they didn't think it survived their winter because they weren't stamped with that zone that would be eligible for fall planting that they now are because the, the sheer difference in the quality of the stem length and the abundance is so amazing. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty excited for people that have actually gained a zone um, to be able with more confidence to plant in the fall, those crops to reap the benefits, which once you fall plant a crop after you've been very early spring or just spring planting it for many, many years, it's like how have I not been doing this the whole time? There is such an amazing difference um, in the quality and the pest and disease resistance. I mean, it's just, it's phenomenal. So it's really very exciting for people growing cool season hardy annuals. 
And Bells of Ireland and Agrostemma or corn cockle, those are both winter hardy to USDA zone seven, by the way. Right. So if you've moved up to a different number zone, it's worth revisiting the list of cool flowers that you might want to grow and seeing, can I actually fall plant these? Because that may impact your plans for the next growing season. Exactly. So, exactly. That be, you know, that's a really good point, Lane. And I would say, you know, folks, don't be panicking right now saying, oh my gosh, I should fall plant. Don't. Um, heed your success by planting way too late this year and having failure. Just mark this on the calendar for next year. Oh my gosh, I now have all these other flowers to plant. Yeah. And I would also say, like you touched on before, Lisa, consider the perennials or shrubs that maybe yes. weren't hardy in your zone before, because I think a lot of people are more willing to experiment with annuals because it's not as big of a financial risk if it doesn't work out. Right. But a lot of times with perennials and shrubs that aren't hardy in your zone, you're kind of more reserved about trying those out if they have a bigger risk of failure. So revisit some of those because you might be able to expand your garden or farm in ways that you hadn't thought about before. And, you know, one thing that I don't, um, that I know that we don't often think about for talking about perennials, for instance, you know, delphiniums, which are, you know, I think they're winter hardy up to zone three. So like everybody pretty much except zone two and one can plant those and they survive their winter. But it's not always just winter that takes plants out. It is the heat right. and the humidity of summer. So even so like, for instance, delphiniums for us still are not going to become perennials because the heat and humidity of our summer just puts such pressure on those plants. They fall victim to disease and pests. So there's still some hiccups, but we now have more plants to select from. Right. And that's also a good point that this USDA hardiness zone map doesn't cover anything to do with heat. This only talks about cold temperatures. Yeah. And frankly, I think heat is more brutal than cold ever thought about being. True. You know? All right. So how about if someone moved up a half zone, but they went from an A to a B? So if someone went from 6A to 6B or 7A to 7B, what are some yeah. of the things you'd be thinking of there? Oh, for sure. So first off, when you're B, that means I'd be reaching across the line into the zone south of me. Um, like, for instance, when we were 7B, um, you know, I was already reaching into eight flowers that are known to only be winter hardy to zone eight to say, hmm, with a little bit of TLC, some low tunnels, maybe I could winter over some of those eight um, zone eight winter hardy plants. And so going from A to B, that is the biggest benefit in my mind is reaching beyond what you should. And I only recommend doing that after you've kind of conquered the cool flower concept. You know, you kind of gotten it a little bit figured out before you start experimenting um, and pushing the envelope, figure out how to do what actually grows in your zone first. Because winter growing is very different than spring and summer growing. So if you've moved up a half zone between numbers seven to eight, five to six, your world has been open to a whole bunch of new cool flowers that you can potentially fall plant. And if you've gone from an A to a B, just start thinking about some of the things you might want to try pushing the envelope on. Yes. All right. So will you personally, Lisa, be changing any of your planting habits based on this change, you know, now that you're officially 8A? And I also have another question. Is there anything that you prefer to plant in very early spring, even if it is hardy in your zone? I know there are a few things that you still just plant in very early spring, even though they could technically make it through your winter. Yes. And you have both their pictures up and those are yeah. really great questions. Um, so straw flowers and stock, which 10 years ago, straw, um, straw flowers wouldn't survive our winter because we were colder back then. But now the most recent years, in fact, we could fall plant them. Um, but because we had been growing them in very early spring or planting them in very early spring for so many years already, we found there really wasn't a great benefit to very early spring planting them. Even with the very early spring planting, they still get tall enough. They are abundant. They go on and produce for a long period of time. So that's just one less thing that, because, you know, it was like teetering right on the edge of maybe they would survive, maybe they wouldn't. So we just don't even 
through the years of being a flower farmer for all this time, I would be willing to say that one of the things that I just don't even, I am really quick to say no to things that might work, that might be fabulous, that might be wonderful, because I want more of an insurance policy. And so with straw flowers, they were one that I wasn't a sure bet. So I very early spring planted them. And even though now they say we're eight, I'm still going to continue to very early spring plant them. Um, and stock is another one. Stock is pretty winter hardy. But what I found is they will bloom in the dead of winter because they'll bloom under short day um, short day lengths. And we don't want them, first off, for two reasons. One is I don't have other flowers to sell in the middle of winter. And it sounds like a good idea to have a little something to make some money on the middle of winter, but not really. It costs right. you so much to start your operation. Um, you know, get all your buckets out, start harvesting, get that whole stuff going again. Um, so we will continue for that reason. Um, and we have great success also with planting stock at our eight weeks before our last frost date in the spring. And we get stock for Mother's Day. So we do really, really well. So um, it's not re really going to be changing any of my habits. Um, and I think that also with other seasoned flower farmers will agree, we've been doing what everybody else is now going to start doing because we're so in tune with the weather, you know, and what the yeah. habits are for our climate. So um, so no real changes here, I don't think. And stock and straw flower are both winter hardy to USDA zone eight. Yeah. Lysianthus is another one, Lisa, that you tend to only plant in very early spring, even though it's technically winter hardy in your zone. We have it listed as winter hardy to USDA zone seven. Can you just talk through some of the reasons for that? Well, Lizzie um, is winter hardy um, and actually to deeper cold zones um, than what we think. But the threat, we did a trial, I think it was two or three years ago, Bobo and I, um, we ordered, we ordered plugs for Lizzie's now, which is a whole nother discussion, right? But we ordered our fall planted Lizzie's and our very early spring planted Lizzie's at the same time. We ordered the same varieties. We planted them in bed by beds that were side by side. So they would be a real true as close as possible trial, right? We fall planted then we very early spring planted right on time. Um, and what we learned is that the very early spring planted Lizzie grew just as tall and abundant, very much the same story as the straw flowers. Yeah. Um, but the threat to our fall planted Lizzie is Lizzie, Anthe Lizzie Anthus is very sensitive to wet feet. That means not such great drainage. And because it stays cool and wet during the winter for such a long period of time, nothing dries out once it gets wet. It's a real threat. So we had, even though we did um, pre-treat the plugs for this problem, we still lost some of those transplants that went through winter where we lost nothing in very early spring. So, um, you know, depends on where you are, um, but we have, if you plant in very early spring in a timely manner, we found that there's no real benefit to fall planting. But that's for me here where I am in, you know, southeastern Virginia. That could be different. Um, but Lysianthus is a cool season hardy annual and it's not the cold that kills them. It is those wet feet that take them out and the diseases that are a result of that. Yeah. So there are still some things you might find yourself wanting to only very early spring plant, yep. even if they are now hardy in your zone. Exactly. Exactly. And if you are someone that is really observant, that pays a lot of attention to the weather or that you've been pushing the envelope on some things, remember that this map has just been updated to reflect the existing conditions. So it's not like this number changing on paper is going to magically make things work for you that haven't worked in the past couple of years. What a good point. I mean, this is just one more little piece of the pie that says, hey, maybe you should try this. Right. You know, a little bit more of um, information, data for you to use. 
Okay, well, that was it. Feel free to let us know if you're watching over on YouTube. Check your USDA hardiness zone and let us know if you have actually moved zones, if you're up a half zone, or if you stayed the same, or what happened with you. And thank you so much for joining us as always. We always appreciate when you leave ratings and reviews in a podcast app or likes and comments over on YouTube. And always be sure to follow or subscribe wherever you're watching or listening so that you don't miss any of our future episodes. Thank you, Lane, so much. And the bottom line here is, friends, that the z- the zone shift only means that you potentially have more flowers to fall plant is all that the real effect of that is. And yes. if you want to learn more about the Gardener's Workshop and all the work that we're doing, um, you can learn more over at thegardenersworkshop.com. And we'd love to see you over there. So, friends, until we meet again, ciao. Bye.